Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Wilson from Macquarie University looking at the microplastics issue down here at beautiful Manly Cove today. We are looking for microplastics uh, through this program called OSMAP, which is the Australian Microplastics Assessment Project, which is a citizen science program involving schools and community groups to understand the microplastics problem around Australia. How does it work? We're using a standardised area, so a, what we call a quadrat. And so at the, the high tide mark, uh, we are basically extracting the top bit of sand and we put it in the sieve. And so I should say there's, there's two sieves here because microplastics, as you might aware, be aware, is anything less than five millimetres. So here we have a five millimetre sieve at the top and underneath we have a one millimetre sieve. Cat. So for this community project, we're just getting them to look at the five to below five to one millimeter range. Okay. Uh, and what's below one millimeter? What is that? Is that still it's a microplastic? It's still microplastics, okay. but it's not visible to the eye. So right. we need microscopes okay. uh, to look at that. But we don't have a name for those. They're still microplastics. It's just okay. a, a, the smaller size fraction. So anything down to 0 0.01 of a millimeter. Yep. Is, is microplastics. Okay. Then we've got nanoplastics below that, so the nano scale. And even below that, we have a smaller size class. It's a thousand fold smaller nano, and that's pico scale. And we haven't even looked at that scale because uh -oh. that's because, as you guys know, plastic just fragments over time. It doesn't go away, and this becomes smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. Macro to micro to, to nano, nano to pico. Correct crazy crazy world all right what do we got yeah so so the technique involves sieving the, the top few centimeters of sand and because the sand's wet we just need to sieve it so it's like panning for gold right uh, plastic gold in this case mm -hmm. top sieve is just to get rid of the, the big stuff okay, as you can see there's not much there there's a bit of seaweed mm -hmm. which is good but then that's the big stuff so that's and you do get macro plastics in there uh, and then this is the one mil sieve, so wow, you can yep. see there's lots of little bits which we don't know are plastic or not at this stage. There's a bit of shell and seaweed you can see. Once, once you've got the sieved contents uh, of the small sieve, the, our one millimeter sieves, yep. uh, and you've excavated your whole quadrat, yep. you tip that into your tray, um, use a bit of seawater, um, or ideally seawater, something that's a bit denser than fresh water. Okay. And you'll see a whole lot of thing floats, a lot yep. of stuff floats. A lot of it's organic, so the browns and things are all wood or seaweed and things like that. That green there is, yep. is plastic, so lots of white. So you have to pick out, these guys already started picking things out. Okay, and separating them by? By colour and type. Okay, great. So here we have resin pellets oh, that yep. have been picked out. Mermaid tears. Mermaid tears. Yep, what else? Um, there's just plastic fragments. There's some styrofoam balls. Mm -hmm. um, more resin pellets there. And so we, the data sheet kind of tells you, you kind of list by item. So yep. how many resin pellets and what color, for instance. So the, the, the age, so you can see there's two types. Mm. If you're picking that up, so there's a yellow one here, that's, which is tells it's okay. quite a, an age. It's been in the environment for a while. So we do multiple quadrats, and we sieve all those on a beach, and it gives us a, an average of the plastic load on that beach. Wow, amazing! And then, what can you determine from these um, micro bits? Yeah, so what we do once we kind of start picking them out, we we look at the types of plastic they are so in terms of. Are they pellets? Are they fibres? Are they foam? So that tells us a bit about the origins. Uh, we also look at the colours of the plastic because that's important in terms of maybe certain animals digest or ingest um, certain colours of plastic. We also uh, look at the chemicals on the plastic and we've talked about the, the nastiness of chemicals in and on plastics before but um, yeah, they, they act like sponges, so there's lots of chemicals on there. So um, in our university labs, we, we look at the chemistry of what's in and on the plastics and how bad that is for the marine life. Mm. Um, and then we try and identify you know, sources. So where is it coming from? So today we found quite a few resin pellets 
which are the base products of right. plas where how plastic is first made, is actually like a pellet. The nurdles? The nurdles, yeah. yeah. All my, mermaid all, tears! Mermaid <laughs> tears, exactly. Yeah. So we found quite a few mermaid tears mm. um, here today, unfortunately. Right. Um, and that tells us about you know, manufacturing. So on this beach here, um, in a survey just the other month, we found 1,200 uh, fragments of plastic or bits of plastic in a square metre of sand. Wow. And you multiply that by you know, the length of the beach, then you're getting millions, billions of, of bits of plastic just on this one beach. Mm. So, I mean, this is a, a large city beach, and so it's getting a lot of inputs from urban sources. Right, so, okay. So, as I said, if we're finding these mermaid tears, then it tells us something about the manufacturing processes going on in the catchment and how they need to be better managed mm. and controlling those pellets coming out into the environment. Hmm.